89 points right now. I tell you, it's true. Two big stories, both with major impacts on the markets and the economy right now. Call it the Bernanke roller coaster down down more than 200 earlier. Now we're up almost 100. No hints of new economic stimulus in his Jackson Hole speech, but what he didn't say might be moving the markets. Plus, Hurricane Irene targeting the East Coast. What will the economic impact be? Well, hello, everybody. I'm Cheryl Cassoni. Joining me for the hour, I've got James Frischling, co-founder and president of New Oak Capital, and our very own stock editor, Elizabeth McDonald. We're over the markets. We're watching the hurricane and much, much more. Peter Barnes is live. Sandra, talk to me about the volatility. Violent swings. What are the traders there saying? Oh, well, they love the volatility. Don't get that wrong. I mean, obviously, for the average investor at home, you know, we sweat all those big swings. But the traders, they come every day trying to make money, and they make money the more volatility there is. So they're happy to see it, but you know all the uncertainty still is causing these big gyrations in the market. As you said, we fell 200 points out of the gate this morning after Ben Bernanke. You know he did not come up with any sort of stimulus. This market had rallied several days on, in anticipation of. So we saw some panic selling, as traders called it, and now we're higher. You know they explain this, Cheryl, by a lot of folks get really, really nervous when things like that happen, and then they sort of think about it, and then they actually like. Something that Brim Bernanke said, and that's he didn't remove the entire possibility of stimulus. He actually said that there's going to be a longer meeting in September where they're going to discuss the tools that they have to help this economy. Then we rallied back. Now we're up 117 points in the Dow at the highs of the session. But I will tell you, if you look at what's actually leading this rally, it's consumer staples. There's a flight to safety still. It's not like folks are diving into the financial names. Uh, they're going to those safe spots like Procter and Gamble and Kraft. That's what they're buying in today's in today's session. So that's what's leading us higher, but the volatility, oh, the volatility, Cheryl, it continues. Well, before I go to Phil Flynn, I want to go to James Frischling just for a moment to get your comment on what we're seeing. A very volatile morning mm -hmm. with the markets. Were you surprised at what we're seeing? In particular, the Dow is now pushing session highs up 127. You know, um, a year ago, uh, this meeting, this speech was kind of a, uh, was really a, a breakout event uh, for Chairman Bernanke. And, uh, and I think a lot of people had thought that it was going to be somewhat muted. Uh, he'd already laid his plan in terms of keeping Keeping rates low, so I was a little surprised that people were then disappointed when he reiterated what he had said a couple of weeks ago. Um, but there you have it: the market initially sold off, but now I think folks are believing the silver lining is develop strategies with the low rate interest environment. And I think there's not much time between this announcement or this speech and the one coming up uh, later in September. So I'm not sure what new information is going to come up. So I think they're going to stand pat, and, and you now know what the uh, the chairman and the Fed are going to be doing. So now we get a market voice from from uh, Mr. Frischling. I want to go to Phil Flynn. Another. Well, the shorter term rates are reacting to the Fed's expectation that they're not going to raise rates again until the middle of 2013. Longer term rates have also been, well, they've been very volatile, but they've been moving uh, lower primarily because the market does expect that the Fed's going to uh, stop buying longer term securities to bring lo longer term rates down, primarily because this recovery is just not up to uh, the standards that the Fed wants. Ward, uh, I agree with you that any uh, speculation or thoughts that uh, Chairman Bernanke was going to uh, uh, tip his hand or talk about QE3 were simply unrealistic. And I, I take as a, a positive sign that he reiterated his stance. However, the GDP number uh, was, was, was it's anemic growth. And, and, and the chairman did say that the, there's just not sufficient growth, growth to make a dent in this unemployment situation. And he's almost calling on Washington uh, to start instituting policies and, and to help. And he specifically mentioned the housing market, which I think is where we've lost so many jobs. Um, is the market not looking at, at, at that as the bad news that, that the chairman is saying, I need your help here because there's only so much I can do with rates? Um, but what are your thoughts on, on just the GDP announcement and, and his call to Washington? Well, the GDP numbers were, you know, pretty much as, as expected. Uh, the good news in them is that consumers spend a little bit more uh, and that we have good reason to expect that the third quarter will grow faster than the second quarter. As far as Washington is concerned, one of the messages that uh, the chairman sent today was that it was a very gentle uh, admonishment to the political class that their behavior has been childish and that they're, it, they've been handling uh, the fiscal situation in an inept fashion. Uh, so hopefully they will heed this. As far as the housing market is concerned, that is one of the things that makes this business cycle different from others that we've had for the past several decades. And there has been a lot of chatter on and off in Washington about taking some kind of dramatic steps in order to 
uh, provide more support for the housing sector. So that's possible, uh, but right now no one has proposed a plan that was logistically feasible and also politically feasible. I mean, if you think about uh, consumer staples, I mean, the best thing to do is, I call it the refrigerator rule. Open your refrigerator door and look at all those things that you're still buying, no matter how, no matter how little money you have, whether you lost your job or not, you still need ketchup, you still need mayonnaise, and those kind of things. <laughs> those companies are still going to do well. They're defensive plays. They're, they're good, uh, good positions not only to get into, but to stay into. And again, if you can buy it on, on a down day, that'll prove to give you some, some opportunity as well. Uh, you're, you're cautiously uh, bullish, and um, uh, I, I guess I keep hearing about uh, you know consumer sentiment is a little bit on the downward uh, trend. Business sentiment, uh, I think the sell-off uh, that we've experienced the, the last part of summer has uh, has kind of created some elements of fear. Um, is there an entry point, or is there something that would uh, give you more confidence uh, that it's time to be going in further? Uh, or again, the cautious optimism is still to kind of watch, wait, wait and see what's playing out both in Europe and here at home with our fiscal troubles. You know, I, I do think that uh, Mr. Bernanke uh, made a good move by not, uh, not claiming that we're going to start a QE3. I think, you know, just saying the same old, same old right now is probably the best move because I think his, almost all his cards have been played. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of monetary policy programs he can introduce that are going to make real change, real lasting change. It's even been proven by QE1 and QE2. I do think, however, the fiscal change, by, by allowing the uh, you know, fiscal change to be looking at the small business owner, to uh, start protecting the small business owner and encouraging him to have the confidence to, to get into uh, you know, entrepreneurial spirit, get into developing things that are really going to take us into the next century, I do think there's, there's you know, a lack of confidence. Uh, he spoke of that. I think uh, building confidence in not only business owners but also in consumers is, is a very important thing. Banks are sitting on a lot of cash. Business owners are sitting on a lot of cash. They're just not deploying it yet because they're not confident. So I am waiting for the American business owner to get more confident and the consumer to get more confident. Uh, Jim Frischling, the storm of the markets is looking good. Last thoughts? Oh, well, I, I do think uh, the economy is fragile. Therefore, natural disasters, they do cause wealth wreckage. So mm -hmm. I, we'll have to digest this thing after, uh, after um, it, it comes through. Hopefully it won't be nearly as bad as expected. But the fact is you already see some businesses being disrupted, and uh, none of this is what we need uh, for the moment. So we'll get through it. Especially the businesses, as you mentioned, and I think that's certainly the concern, all the tourism mm -hmm. business. I mean, like, look, look, we go through hurricane we'll season we'll every year, uh, and sometimes the season's bad. This one isn't looking so good so far. And in some years, you know, we survive. Do you think yeah, we'll we be survive. tipped into a double dip recession from it, though? Uh, no. I, no, um, you don't. No. But, but it's interesting how many people have, have increased that, uh, the, the, the likelihood of that taking place, not because of the storm. Uh, it was less than 20%. It creeped up to 30%. We have some kind of a saying now it's 50 50. So there has been a move up in terms of that, that type of speculation, but not because of the storm. My favorite email just came in a few moments ago from someone that said, You New Yorkers can handle getting a little wet. The rest of us around the country are going to be shopping. We're going to be out and about. The, the other. We'll be okay. America. That was right. actually kind of funny. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I mean, again, I mean, the, the storm. Is, I mean, I have to say, uh, New York, the Massachusetts, the Carolinas, preparations have been excellent. I mean, I have to say that the president heading back to Washington. So it's nice to see that our officials, our elected officials, uh, are, are ahead of this now. Yeah, and what I want to see is that other front that could uh, push this storm out to sea. I want more information about that, that other front that could be moving across the United States to make it behave like a pinball and get whacked out, at, out to sea. And you're sea. not talking about Hurricane Ben. You're still talking about Hurricane I'm not talking about Hurricane Ben, no. <laughs> That's what I was calling him yesterday. Uh, no, look, I, I've you know, covered hurricanes for years as well, and, and they're very unpredictable. I mean, mm -hmm. none of us saw Katrina coming, and it went exactly where we didn't think it was going to go. So it's all Always, you just never know what the track is going to do, and that's why, right. you know, there, it's so, and it'll, again, preparations are great at this point. Liz McDonald, James Frischling, thanks for spending the hour sure. with me. I'll see all of you.